Hello, today I'd like to show you how to do two things. One, add a border to your part, and two, how to email your work to your teacher. So the first step is, here I have a part. Now you want to turn this drawing into your teacher. So you go to insert, and you pick insert. Like you can pick recent blocks, we don't have any, but you want to pick blocks from other drawings. What you do is you navigate to wherever you are saving, wherever you are saving your border. You click on it and you hit open. And what happens is you get a dialog box. That's what these things are called. I'm gonna drag mine out so you can see it clearly. Your dialog box is right here and it's opened up border and there, there is your actual border. When you double click on it, it appears behind the dialog box. Now, Remember in the beginning I had mentioned, I want you to build your border with zero, zero as your lower left corner. The reason I asked you to do that and not just draw anywhere is because you'll notice as I move this around, the crosshairs in the lower left corner happen to be where zero, zero is on that drawing. Your crosshair location when you're dropping an object into another drawing directly correlates to where zero, zero is in your native drawing that you created. So in our case, you had created the border, right? And you did it to zero, zero. So that's why the lower left corner is the handle for that object. So when you want to drop it, I recommend you roughly center it, make it look nice, and then click, done. That's it. You never bring your drawing, the, the part that you're making, into your border. It's always the other way around. You're always bringing your border into your drawing that you're working on, whatever that drawing is, whatever part it is or assembly, doesn't matter. You're bringing your border into your drawing. You always insert it into your drawing, never the other way around. The other thing you're gonna learn this semester is this is one way to bring your border in. The other method is you're gonna use layout. I'm gonna teach you about layout. Layout is not model. See, this is model tab in the lower left corner. The other tab is layout. Here also you bring in your border. See that? Same border, nothing's changed. Emily, thank you for letting me use your border. But one thing you are gonna do differently, instead of just trying to eyeball where you're gonna drop it, you're gonna let go of your mouse and you're going to type in zero comma zero comma zero and hit enter. That way your border literally drops centered to this piece of paper. Very important, that's how you do it. You don't try to eyeball it. Too much work, you're gonna end up with carpal tunnel. Don't want you to have it. So once your border is in, I dropped it in here, perfectly positioned, that's where you want it. Okay guys, and layout. Now, you'll notice the frame, this frame that your, your object is in, it's called a viewport. It's like a window. So picture the viewport into model. Whatever I do here, if I draw a line just randomly, when I go to layout, it appears. In order for you to touch the object, I got to double click inside my viewport. Then I can touch the object inside. That like opens the window. If I go back and double click outside of my viewport, now I've gotten back behind the glass. Got it? I can still see you, but I can't shake hands with you. So next thing I want you to do, I always recommend you take your viewport and pull the little grips to the corner. So that way your viewport matches exactly the same size as your interior space of your border. Next step in the lower right corner, I want you to make sure that the scale of your object is one to one. Scale is something we'll spend more time on. One to one, see that? Zoom right in, isn't that beautiful? If you double click in the viewport and do this a lot, your mouse, guess what you're affecting? Scale. So that's what you're doing here. So when you want to fix this scale, if you, like let's say you zoomed in for something, you wanted to fix it, and you're like, oh yeah, okay, fix that. And then you're like, oh darn it, I want to zoom back out to 101. In the lower right corner, there it is, 101. Whoop. Now it's there, but you're like, oh darn it, it's not centered. That's okay, just move it over. You can pan it over. If you double click on your on your uh, wheel, on your mouse, that basically centers it, but it obviously changes the scale. So let's let's do this 
obnoxiously. There you go. I lost my cart. Remember how I told you double click on your wheel and it comes back to you? When you're in layout, it comes back to you, but the scale changes to whatever, you know, because it zooms all the way in. Just pick one of one and it zooms out dead center to your viewport. That's the trick of the trade and how you can center that view into your viewport easy because I'm lazy and I would like you to be as lazy as me. When you are done impacting your view, now I take my mouse and actually it's my left mouse button, I double click outside to get out of that view, got it? So that's step one. So once you're done setting your, your border up, your next step is to go ahead and send it to me, but I've already told you, you can't send it to me as a uh, AutoCAD file, as the way we would receive it in the field, which is a PDF. So you're going to go to File, Print. Print is where I would go. When you click on Print, you're going to get a bunch of options. I typically tell you to pick the last one, continue, plot a single page, because that's what you're doing. You're only printing one sheet. Now, your print parameters are as follows. First, instead of picking a printer, you're going to, you're going to pick Microsoft Print to PDF. The paper size is letter. Your paper size will always be letter in this country. If you are going to be working elsewhere, then you probably will pick A4, A5, whatever the metric size equivalent is, or the British, and we can discuss for days what all these different types are, but we're not going to. Letter is what we select because the printers that we have in our homes, the printers that are here on campus are letter, are designed to the US system, which is letter. What to plot? When you are using layout, you actually plot layout. Okay, because we're in layout one. You can actually print layout. And you don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, plot scale one on one, you leave it alone. Your plot scale and layout predominantly will always be one to one. Of course, there'll be exceptions to, to what I just said. And when, when we cover them, we'll, we'll discuss them. But for the purpose of most of your work, when you are printing in layout, it will be one to one. Eight and a half by 11, the default size, plot scale. For now, also we've got plot styles. We haven't gotten into this, but I do recommend you pick monochrome. We haven't gotten into colors yet, but you will start using colors in your work and we'll talk about that later. So I always say pick monochrome because the printers in our labs are black and white printers anyway. The rest you're gonna leave alone. I'll show you more later. But before you ever hit OK, I want you to hit Preview. I want you to see what it looks like. Again, WYSIWYG, right? What you see is what you get. Do you want it to print in the lower left corner like that? No, you want it to print centered. So you hit Escape. The only way you can print it centered, you see I don't have a choice here. Of all things, I recommend you pick Window. And your window is the lower left corner of your border to the upper right corner of your border not the paper. Remember, the paper just shows you the whole piece of paper. Then you get the choice and plot offset to pick center of the plot. Now when you hit preview, voila, it is beautiful. It's dead center. If your border does not show up completely, if parts of your border are chopped off, it's because your border is physically too big. You have to change its size. If you have a printer that has borderless printing, you can actually give yourself even less room for obvious reasons. But most printers are not designed with borderless printing in mind. So the design of this particular border is to accommodate most printers. And every company you go to, you're gonna find out you might have to make adjustments because it depends on the kind of printer they use. Once you've done this, then you can hit the little plot button. Plot and print in the world of AutoCAD are the same thing. I recommend you save to your flash drive, wherever it is. And create a folder for yourself for the class that you're in. Just a word of advice. We have enough things that you don't wanna be hunting down work and you may wanna identify what semester you're in. See that? Your class and semester. And you hit save and you're done. That file is what you want to email me. That's when you jump over here and my in-class homework, jump over to, to your side options here. You pick email, you send it to all your teachers, uh, all instructor users. That should go to both of us. Yep. And then you'll call it part two. First, I got to learn how to type part two. Okay. You can put in your hello, so-and-so, thanks for your time, blah, blah, blah. And if you want to have a message, it's up to you. And you want to, one thing I will ask that you do, this is a word of advice. 
I do ask that you pick on return receipt. It's a nice little way of being informed that, that it go out. Just my advice. Pick attach a file, hit browse, go into your folder wherever you're storing your stuff, and then take your part and hit open, and it'll attach it. Then you just hit submit, and you're done. And that's it. Um, outside of that, you're saving to your flash drive. You're saving properly to your flash drive, so you're good. That should end this video.